الهيئة العامة للسياحة والآثار ملتقى السفر والاستثمار السياحي Hello, good evening. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Silvia Barbone. I am the, the director of two organizations, JLEG, which is a consulting and educational organization, training organization, and a not-for-profit organization, which is named FEST, Foundation for European Sustainable Tourism, which has a specific aim to support destinations and businesses to deliver sustainable tourism. I am also a member of the Tourism Consultancy Network, which, uh, and is, which is coordinated by Roger Goodacre, and we are here, a group of us. And I work with, uh, I'm based in Brussels, I'm Italian actually, but I'm based in Brussels and my company is also as the headquarters in London, so I work between Brussels and London. I work close to the European Commission regarding the sustainable tourism indicators. I don't know if you are familiar with the sustainable tourism indicators. We are 10 experts, 10 European experts that are supporting the implementation of sustainable tourism indicators. That's my short presentation. And today, during this session, I have two sessions. The first one is dedicated to management and leadership. So it's about the how. Yesterday, we talked about the what, what we can do to grow the tourism industry. But the, but the big issue is not the what, but is how. Taleb Rifai, the General Secretary of UNWTO, during one of the last events, what he said was, to let tourism grow is not about what we have, but it's about how we manage what we have and how we create new products. This is even the case of Dubai. It's how they will well, how they will manage the old destinations. So this is the framework of my presentation today. How to plan and assess a, su a successful tourism project. First of all, we start with some definition. What is a project? Do you have any idea of how, how would you like to define a project? Do you have any experience with projects? Yes? With some, what type of a project? Okay, information center? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Any idea, any suggestion regarding what is a project? So, a project, first of all, is something which allows us changes. Means that if we design a project, it's because if we are at stage A, we want to go there, and so we start a project, we run a project to improve situations, to answer to specific needs. And to do that, we need to create a special organization. We need to create a business case. We need to create the why. So the, in the definition is a temporary organization that is created for the purpose of delivering one or more business products according to an agreed business case. Means that, for example, from the presentation of yesterday, if we are developing a new excursion this can be considered a project. To do that, we need to create the organizations, meaning who is responsible for. We need to create the business case, meaning that we need to define the timing, the cost, the scope, the quality, all the main characteristics of our project. So we have also, we, have, we can have small scale projects and large scale, medium and large scale projects and really can empower destinations. Projects are really the way how we can regenerate destinations. 
So if you are thinking of building a new resort, a new stadium, a new big event, that you, because you want to reinvent your country, your region, you are delivering projects. And, but there is a lesson learned we need to be aware of, that sometimes projects means funding. It's not enough. When, when, when any project you are managing, it's not only about funding. It's a much more complex subject. And we need talents. We need skilled people to manage, even to think and to uh, create a project, even to develop inno innovative project ideas is the first challenge. It's not easy to develop a great and innovative project idea. It's not about transferring what we have seen abroad. It's adding our value added. It's about creating something new. It's, it's about creating tra something transformative something which is going to impact our destination. When we talk of projects, we need to talk of project management. So it's, and project management is the planning, delegating, monitoring, controlling all the aspects, and also involves motivation. Because project management means people, means people working for projects and we need motivated staff. And means also measurement. While we manage, we plan a project, means that we need to set some targets and we need to assess continuously our project against specific targets. And the targets are quality, cost, time scale, benefits, risks, scope. In the past, they used to, to assess projects only through two categories, the timing and the budget. Is, the, is the, the project running within the time frame? Yes, so it's a good project. Is the project being running within the budget? Yes, so another box. That's not enough, that's not enough. We need a step forward. So we need to assess the project against all those varia var variables. The scope, which is the scope of your project. And we need to make sure that our project is run, is run within the scope. It's not going out of the scope. I, will, I would like to hear from you if you have any project you are running or if you have in mind a project that you would like to develop. Do you have any project? Any time? Yes. Uh, excuse me, sorry. Can I have a mic, please? Excuse me. Can I have a mic? Okay, I will come to you, and I will listen, and I will repeat. I have a project, uh, you know, a small business. Okay. Yes. What type hotel, of a hotel? hotel. Yes. Yeah, so okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. Thank you very much. So, uh, I have a from three million kids. From? From uh, three kids now. Uh huh. Yes, and I have two. Uh, so you want to build an hotel? This is the project? You want to build an hotel? No, I have. I have ah, you have the hotel yes. and you have two projects related to your hotel. Yes. About? Yes. About what? About the same business. Hotel. Ah, yes. so you want so to yes. add new. Okay, expanding. Yes. Okay, so uh, our colleagues, he was suggesting that he has a project, he runs an hotel and he would like to expand his activities, so his portfolio, and he would like to open two new hotels. That's a big project, actually. And this is a project itself. So you need to plan, you need to plan how you are going to organize your project. And project management is critical to be successful. And there are a lot of lessons learned. There are not even in Europe worldwide. There are very bad projects. Many projects and with many money spent without receiving any benefits. 
So thank you very much for sharing with us your project idea. I will come back to your project idea. So when we start talking about projects, we need to talk about project management. But we are in the tourism industry, and when we talk about projects, we need to talk about sustainability. Project management and sustainability are strictly connected. And this is why has been developed pm 4 esd Project Management for Sustainable Development, because combines these two pillars for, for the tourism growth, management and sustainable development. And what is any project we develop, let's take the example of the hotel. We need to have a different vision. It's not a lot about only having the vision of our products, but it's about running the project, having in mind that we need to deliver long-term benefits, long-term benefits for local communities and destinations. Regarding the hotels in the second presentation, we will focus specifically regarding this sector. PM4SD is a structured project management based on ready on Prince 2, and we combine some management procedures together with sustainable tourism criteria and principles. So we need a step forward in sustainable tourism. Projects need to be planned on structured sustainable tourism policies and deliver long-term benefits. So the first thing we need to be aware of that we should have also supporting the policies, but the policies are not by the side of, a, of the businesses, but should be by, re, be developed by the national government, regional authorities, anyone in charge. So as you can see, tourism is quite a complex sector. Do you have any sustainable tourism policies in Saudi Arabia? Do you have any guidelines, any framework regarding tourism? Yes? Okay. Okay. So good. So you, you, you can refer to, the, to your policies as well as to international policies. So the first two uh, key factors of success and to be competitive in the industry are given from the governance and management. Because tourism is managed by people and it makes a huge difference if we have talented and leaders in the sector. So we said that is a complex sector because combines many, basically, uh, many different actors, first of all. And the actors are, need to be divided in two different types. We have organizations and we have also professionals. As you are here, you are a businessman, for example, but you also represent maybe a small and medium enterprise. Do we have any uh, representative from tour operators? Yes, the lady is a tour operator. Do we have anyone from heritage site here? No one. Someone from uh, the tourist board? No one? Okay. Maybe uh, we have some uh, local, regional, and national authorities? No. Hotels? Do you represent hotels, the hotel sector? Okay. And so we have a double role. We represent one organization, but we also are individuals, professionals. So we need to be aware of the role that we have in order to plan successful projects. So which is my role? 
I am a decision maker, I'm a student, a civil sense, uh, servant, entrepreneur, team manager, project manager, and according to the role, I will find out in, my, in the tourism supply chain what I can do, how I can create transformative projects. As I was saying, any, we can have any different type of project. Building a new hotel was a, an example. Design a tourism itinerary is another project. Implementing a destination management organization. Do you have familiarity with DMO? Yes, okay. Building new attractions, promoting intangible heritage is another project. I was, uh, yesterday, I was walking around uh, here, the exhibition, and you have actually many things related to intangible heritage, which is related also to the crafts, to the food, to the history, so there is a richness which can be used to empower the destination and can be used to create new innovative projects. And as you, as you know, tourism is really cross, a cross-sector, meaning that it's very connected with agriculture, with culture, with environment. So we can even create multi-sectoral projects, not only tourism-related projects. So what we need to do to start, actually, it's just brainstorming, starting thinking how we, want, uh, how we can create new projects which, are, which can change and create, create new opportunities to diversify our economies. Because tourism is the industry which really is the, most, the fastest growing industry nowadays. And it's a great opportunity. So when we talk of project management, it's quite a complex subject because we need to be aware that tourism needs to be managed professionally. It's a sector, again, which needs leaders. So the PM for SD structures, as you see, we have two central lines, processes and components. We have variables, as we have seen in the beginning, cost, time scale, quality scope, risk and benefits. We have the principles, which are the sustainable tourism principles. The processes are the activities that we put in place when we start projects. The components are the knowledge that we apply, the techniques are management techniques and stakeholder management techniques. And then we have, when we deliver projects, when we plan and deliver projects, we actually have two type of products, tourism specialist products and management products. So let's start taking, being familiar with this structure. As I was saying, it's very important to connect the projects to the policies. It's important that when you plan, so the first inspiration for you should come from the, your national policies. You should go back to the policies and see which, are, which is the vision of my country, where they want to be, and trying to generate new project ideas to be aware of the policies is very important. And then we have, after the policies, nations usually develop and design programs, and then we have the projects, this is the third step. Any project usually, this is the project life cycle, which goes from the project mandate, which is when we start the project, meaning, meaning that we have signed a contract, and as you can see, we have a post-project phase, which is the benefit realization. Many projects deliver results, meaning they deliver benefits 
after the closure. For example, if we are developing the new hotel, we, we, all the infrastructure is ready, but then the real benefits, meaning the new tourists coming, will come after. So the benefits actually for the hotels will arrive later. Any projects needs to be divided in different stages. We need to start, we need to deliver the projects, and then we need to close the project. So these are the first three blocks of activities we need to organize. When we start a project, before starting, for example, the new itinerary, so you need to prepare the product description, how you see these itineraries, who is going to be in charge for what. You need to prepare your business case. You need to select your suppliers. You need to have a valid reason. You need to, to, to have a proper budget. And then you can start the project, especially after you have all the roles appointed. And then we have the delivery stages. So we implement, it's when really the projects will meet the, will be built uh, for answering the customer's needs. So we need to build the itinerary. And to build the product we used to have, we need to have more than one product. Because we have, for example, in the case of uh, the itineraries, we will have, we need to develop the itineraries, we need to have some infrastructure works, we need to have communication as activities as well. So we, we, we will need several skills. So the first thing to do is to map your product, creating a map with all your product and sub-products so that you can also map all the skills and all the needs to which you need to answer. Then we have the controlled, controlled closure and then we have the post-project phase to manage. So it's a continuous pro process. But what is important to acquire as knowledge is that it's not only about the project, something running continuously. But in order to be monitored, you will have a start and you will put an end. Then you will go and you assess. Maybe after the closure, you will reopen a new project. For example, in the case of the new itineraries, maybe we'll be promoting the itineraries. Maybe this will be a new project or expanding the itineraries. Regarding the hotel, maybe branding, finding new brands for your, for your hotel. So you need really Project management is a continuously activity because things don't go by themselves. It's not, I come from Italy and this is what they have done, unfortunately. We always talk about Pompeii, unfortunately, they are not managing, but things need maintenance. In tourism, it's very important that management is in place continuously. So there are 10 principles, I was saying, in the structure. The 10 PM4SD principles to guide your project. So we have continued business justification, learning from experience, roles and responsibilities, managing by stages, management by exception, focus on products, Tailor for the project environment, collaborative approach, sustainability, and policy. Let's see principle by principle. So if I go to the continued business justification, it means the why, why you want to deliver this project. And the first why is assessed, you need to assess cost and benefits. And the, the project needs to be uh, you need, need to have a positive result when you assess cost and benefits. And the why, the, your, your why needs to be very, very clear. Because if it's clear to you, will be clear to your customers as well. 
we, so clarity is the first element you need to have in your initiatives. So we still have just one project, the new hotel. Anyone else? Any new project? Yes? Trip. Oh, oh can, can you use the mic? Design a trip. OK. Why you would like to do this project? OK. OK. I assume, OK, I'm a tour operator. I want to do But actually, because clients maybe are asking for these new trips, right? So it's always the why needs to be related to the market. It's not about our role, because otherwise, the risk is that we are developing something which will be, w that never will be successful. So the why is related to the needs of the market. Learning from experience is so important, but it's so difficult because no one in tourism wants to show their knowledge. They want to keep their knowledge for them. But nowadays, through networks, and also, of course, internet, but the real knowledge is not on the web, by the way, but joining. So you should go out of the box and try to connect with the external uh, competitors and, uh, and, and search, and also partners. Search for innovation, be inspired, and learn from the others. You can learn from external partners, but you can learn, of course, from yourself as well, from your history. And you should took, tr take track of your learning. Growth and responsibility is very important. When we start a project, we need to define the roles. For small businesses, this is a real challenge because there, is, there are also one, two people just covering many aspects. But never mind. What is important is to have a job profile, really to have a profile description so that we know what we need. Because if you need a communication expert and you don't have the expertise, you may need to have an external consultant, for example. Managing by stages. In order to make it easy, just organize your project in small block of activities because you can control them. So regarding the itineraries, maybe you can have the first one will be just building the itineraries on, the, on paper. Then you can have a test going. Another one could be organizing the work with your suppliers. Then you can invite maybe some clients to test. So you can organize in, in different blocks of activities. So you close one activity and you start a new one. Focus on products, that's very important. Tourism is related to, it's very related to intangible products as well. It's related to services. So it's difficult sometimes to describe in a tangible way the successful factors. Because why we are successful is not because we opened the hotel. It's because we are able to give a great experience to, to the client. So in order to do that, we need to perform several activities. And we need to control how we are going to achieve this. So we need to think about how the final products needs to be composed by several products. And we use for this a technique which is called product breakdown structure, meaning you start from the final products, which will be the excursion, the new trip, or the new hotel, and then you map all the sub products from the infrastructure to the communication to the research to the event if you have a small event to, to launch your initiative. Tailored to suit the project environment, we need to be flexible. So, flexibility is important. If we have a small scale project, we don't need uh, a big organization. Collaborative approach. Collaborative approach is critical because tourism success doesn't depend actually only by our actions, 
but depends all from the actions from all other partners, from all other stakeholders. Sustainability. Do you have any sustainable policy here in Saudi Arabia? No? That's important. This will be the next step for you. Sustainability is really important, but the second session is more about the sustainability regarding the hotel's perspective. And policy, as we say, policy needs to make our needs to make our projects inspiring and benefit oriented. So we have talked about processes, we have talked about roles, and, and in this slide there is the combination of the different processes and the roles. Because you see that in any project we have five processes from the project direction, project initiation, stage definition planning, stage control and product delivery, and project closure. Before approaching the processes, process by process, I wish to uh, let you pay the attention on the three different levels, directing, managing, delivering. We need roles to be covered at the directing level, level, at the managing and at the delivering level. We need a direction. We need to have projects which are supported by clear direction. We need someone coordinating the activities and we need someone delivering. So directing in the case of the new excursion or in the case of the new hotel, we will have, you will be the director because you are the business owner. Maybe you have a project manager managing the old stuff and all the, all the work to be done. And then you will have the different uh, delivering levels. So you will have the, inf the person in charge of building the infrastructures and the restaurant and, and whatever. So you will, will have the deliver, the team, uh, dedicated to the delivery. So three different levels, yes. We will see in the next, in the next picture, yeah. Uh, regarding the processes, we start from a pre-project stage, we start and uh, you see that the first process to start, even when the project has, yet, has not started yet, is the project direction. It's the first to start and the, 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 the last to end. Then we have the project initiation, which is a very small um, uh, uh, stage. And you can, during this uh, stage, you take care about all the formalities of your, of, for your project. <clears throat> then you organize, you start organizing your project. So, for example, can you tell me which is the first stage for your project? Mm -hmm. To look for? Find the destinations. Okay, that's good. Okay. So, actually, the first stage for building a new itinerary, the first stage will be dedicated to research, let's say. You will have uh, desk research and field research. To do this, we cannot straight go to the research. We need to plan how you are going to deliver this research, with which tools, how long it will last, which budget you will have for this stage. Are you assessing, taking some examples from other experiences? So before starting the stage one, meaning the first set of activities, I need to have my plan and then I can deliver. So planning, plans represent the backbone of our projects. Before delivering, we need to plan. So before you start plan, you delivering your research and you start looking for destinations, you need to prepare your stage plan. Two pages, three page flexibility, remember, is very important. But you need to have 
a formal paper and you need to put also some quality criteria on it. So we have the process is named stage definition. The stage control and product delivery is when we deliver. So we are going to select the destination. We are going to do the field work. So as you can see, we always have two different stages. One we plan and then we deliver. And these processes, they are the same until the end, until the last stage, until we have the project closure and we close the project. Maybe we will start a new project. When we close the project, we need to have an exit strategy. What next? Because if you create your itineraries and you sell the itinerary just once, will be not, you are not receiving any benefits. So in your project closure, you are going to have your marketing plan and your exit strategy. The component, the component, as I was saying, are the technical knowledge planning, business case organization, quality, progress control, risk issue, and change management. Risk management is very important. For example, yesterday, because of the sun, I think there were several problems. And if you are running an excursion, you may have several problems. So you need to have your risk plan in place. But the first important, the mo first important actually element to have successful projects is given by the organizations, meaning role and responsibilities. And I come back to the question that uh, uh, was done before. So at the directing level, we will have the project board. This will depend according to the complexity of our project. If we have a small project, a small scale project, means that the business owner will be the project executive and maybe will be also the project manager. But the line, as, a, as you can see, goes from the top to the down, and we have from the project board, we have the project manager, the team managers, and then we have the team members. So the first line, the project board, is the directing level. The project manager is the managing level, and then we have the delivering level <laughs> given by the team managers together with the team members. On the left, as you can see, we have the business uh, user supply project assurance. Quality is very important. You may have an external advisor for quality. So the organization is to have your team structure should be part of your initial plan. And you should also write the roles of the, the person. Then we need to have a draft business case in the very beginning. We need to understand which are the final objectives we want to achieve and understand how we get the funding and lessons learned. So you need to put your feasibility study, even if it's a draft version before starting, but you need to have a solid justification for your project. So this was the other component. And what is really important is that we need to have a benefit-oriented approach meaning that it's not enough to deliver products, we need to go behind and deliver benefits. So how this is possible? This is possible if we, have, if we apply methodologies and if, if we are sustainable, we are, uh, uh, in our work, we apply sustainable tourism principles and criteria so we deliver outputs from the outputs. The outputs is the, the product itself. It's what we are delivering. So we are, the, we are, in this case, we will have a new itinerary. And the output will be the new itinerary. The outcome is
we are creating a new trip, so we are diversifying actually the tourism offers. This is the outcome. We are promoting our destination with our new uh, product. But the real benefits will come after when the tourists will come and they will use. And this is the benefit. So it's not, and why? I mean, now we, we did the example with itineraries. But actually, if you go for big projects, this structure is really very often not. Um, hello? Doesn't work? Can you hear me? No. Does it work? Thank you. If we think, oh, if we if we think about mm. if we think about big projects. In many cases, we have projects which have delivered products like a new stadium or new infrastructures, which, which one? Both? Both? It's not easy. Sorry, this is for the camera. Yeah, I know, but I knew, but he didn't. So I told him. So yes. yes. Hey? Okay. Let it. Yeah. It's okay. open. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, no, I can. Okay, I can talk with this as you wish. Okay. So what is really important is that if you are planning small, medium or large scale projects, it's all about the benefits and you need to produce your benefits realization map according to each of the product that you are delivering. So even if you are, you are, you are de de delivering the final itinerary, but maybe it's not only about the itinerary itself. Then you have also sub products. If you are doing an hotel, you may have a swimming pool. So you need to really make sure that you are delivering benefits. And it's not only about infrastructures, because unfortunately in the tourism industry, we have very bad lessons of projects that I have created. A lot of infrastructures, new museums, new stadiums, and new facilities that are not being used. Especially when you have, for example, big events, they start building, 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 and then you leave the facilities and they are not used anymore. So you are creating only these benefits. You are not creating benefits. Okay, I will close this. Uh, sorry, we just uh, transferred the, 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 the keynote to PowerPoint, so this, this is the result anyway. So all the methodology, so as I was saying before, actually, it's very important that we start to be talented and we start applying project management to any project that we are, not only projects, but to any plans that we are developing in the country. It's really important to create a group of talented stakeholders putting together the public and the private sectors. Especially here where I was searching, doing some search, seems that everything is starting now. And so it's really important to 
create the stakeholders group and start managing the tourism in a proper and enthusiastic way. So all the methodology, was, uh, we have been talking about processes, components and the techniques. It's all related to this project management qualification, which is called PM4SD. It's a qualification. So as you see, tourism is very related to, to, um, uh, to education. And so we developed this qualification with two different levels, foundation and practitioner for advanced senior managers. But I want to show you something else. Uh, so this is summer school in leadership and management for sustainable tourism. Actually, we run, I, I, I manage together with the World Tourism Organization and also with the European Travel Commission. We manage each year in a different region. So it's a, a summer school, it's a three-day summer school where we put together donors and implementers and we showcase the best practices in tourism projects. And so there, there are keynote speakers, but the most important thing is that we really um, want to support the way how destinations are planning their tourism growth and how projects are planned and managed. So each year we have a different location. This year will be in uh, Bilbao. You are welcome to, to join the summer school. And the summer school is hosted by Basketour, which is a uh, which is uh, the, the Basque uh, Tourist Board and uh, is also in Victoria, which is the European Green Capital also and close to the Bilbao Museum, I don't know if you are familiar, so it's a big attraction actually and will be from the 1st to the 3rd of July. And we have several board members with first as I was saying, WTO Next Tour, which is a network of sustainable tourism regions, and uh, is supported by European by EU institutions. Here is just about the logo. I had also uh, we have run programs all around uh, Europe, and also one experience in Jordan. Actually, we supported the Department of Antiquities for the Jarash archaeological site because they don't have the management plan. So we did a 10 days, we did a 10 days training actually there. Oh, sorry. So, okay, this is, sorry again, it's not nice, the, the picture because it has been changed again. So it's good, oh, but it's finished because there is no power anymore in the, in the computer. It's okay anyway because I was close to the end of my presentation. So what would be my final message after this session is really about having a different approach, having a vision, having within ourselves the knowledge, the understanding that if we are in the tourism industry, we can, we are, we need to have a leadership role. We cannot just manage things without managing them properly and without creating, the, uh, uh, without applying uh, any management structure, the methodology, and without having a talented people. Uh, this is a very, this is a need for the, for, uh, for the sector in any country and in any region. So this is the, really the final uh, message. Leadership, governance, management are the three sectors and uh, the three topics through which any plan should refer to, any country should refer to. So thank you so much for your attention. Thank you. Shukra. Al-Hayatul-Amma-Lisiyahati-Wal-Athar. Multaqa-Safar-Wal-Istithmar-Siyahi. <laughs>